Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Austin Harley and today we're going to be talking about the fastest way to increase your credit in 2020. So without further ado, go ahead and smash that like button and let's jump right into method number one. Now method number one you may or may not have heard before, however it's a no-brainer bulletproof method that whether you have bad credit or you have good credit you should do to strengthen your credit score and it's to apply for a secured loan. Now the first thing you're asking me is what the heck is a secured loan because you've heard of loans in general, but why would you want to get a secured loan? And there's two main reasons why you would want to go about that route. The first one is, is if you apply with a local credit union and verify, there's a 99% chance that they don't even actually run an inquiry to get you approved for this loan. And the concept is super simple and equivalent to applying for a secured credit card. You're putting money down. Let's just use the example of $1,000 and they're going to give you $1,000 back in the secured version of a loan. Now with that loan, they're going to report out to all three credit bureaus and remember Remember, they're not running an inquiry to get you approved for any of this stuff and you're gonna be paying the thousand dollars back out of the thousand dollars that they gave you back in the form of a loan over the course of one entire year now since they're not running an inquiry to get you approved for this type of loan it's another active reporting trade line getting reported out to the three credit bureaus for it completely free you didn't even have to run an inquiry or damage your credit to be able to get approved for this and anyone can do this all you have to do is go to a local credit union ask them for a secured loan, verify that they don't run an inquiry to do this, and at least have $500 to $1,000 saved in a bank and do it for at least a minimum of a one-year time period. You could even apply for an unsecured loan after you finish paying off the secured loan to build it, your relationship with that local credit union and have another active reporting trade line getting reported out to the three main credit bureaus. Now, I'm not gonna talk too much in this video because I wanna keep it short, simple, and straight to the point. However, if you want a little bit more info about exactly how to get approved for a secured loan, I made a complete video video and I'll link it up here and down in the description so don't forget to subscribe hit the like button and check out that video after you finish watching this video and the third bonus reason why a secured loan is gonna be an awesome fit for you is because once you finish off paying off that secured loan it's gonna report out and look good to the credit bureaus because you have a complete loan paid in full from start to finish with all the monthly payments caught up in current. And not many people actually have that on their credit report, especially if you think about the type of secured loans out there, such as car loans that are secured to the car or mortgages that are secured to the house. Not many people have their houses or their cars paid off in general. So you going above and beyond and having a loan paid off, regardless if it's secured or unsecured, is just gonna make you look that much better in front of the credit bureaus whenever you go on and apply for a mortgage, a house, or anything of that sort later on. Now the second method that we're gonna be talking about that's gonna be an awesome strategy for you to use in 2020 is gonna be dealing with balance transfers. Now in depth, there's so many different things you can do with balance transfers and it honestly all boils down to your specific credit situation to be able to maneuver around debt so that you can get it reporting out as either a zero balance or a lower balance in general so that you can boost up your score. If you have any upfront questions or just wanna learn more about balance transfers after I tell you about this tip, I did happen to make another video right here and I'll link it down in the description as below. But nonetheless, the strategy is very simple. Let's say you have a few different credit cards with balances, you want to get all the balances shifted over to the card that has the absolute highest limit so that way your utilization ratio is below 30% across the board or at least so that the balances are spread as low of the utilization as you can possibly go. Now when doing a balance transfer, you wanna keep in mind a few things. The first thing you wanna keep in mind is you don't wanna just cram all of your debt from all of your credit cards spread across the board into one card because it's not really gonna help you at all, especially if that one card has a higher utilization rate or has a higher interest rate, you're just gonna end up paying more towards the credit card companies in interest than you are really going to help you just pay down your debt. So keep in mind you wanna transfer it to a card that has a really high limit or the highest limit out of all the cards that you have but you don't also wanna just max out a card and then get all the other cards zeroed out. Unless that card has a 0% interest rate that you know you're gonna make massive payments toward and work that utilization rate down. Again, the goal is to quickly be able to boost up your credit score and not really worry so much about interest rates because we all know that credit card companies have insane interest rates. So if you follow the strategy of spreading it across the board or moving a lot of your debt into a card with an extremely high credit limit, then you're gonna lower your overall utilization rate and thus boost up your credit score. Now there are a few caveats to doing balance transfers and it depends on which financial institution you're using. Most of them do charge balance transfer fees. Some of them charge 3% fees. So if you're talking about moving thousands of dollars over, that's something you're going to have to weigh because you could be paying 30, 60, 90 dollars in fees just to be able to do that. So if you're moving it over to a card with a lower interest rate, you need to be able to keep that in mind 
and make sure that you're paying off the debt accordingly and not just cramming it all into one card so that you can have your utilization rate lower on some other card. Bella. And the third and final tip that we're gonna be talking about kind of sorta of has to deal with balance transfers in general, but it's actually to open and apply for a new credit card. Now there's a few main reasons why this can be super beneficial to you no matter what situation you're in. And the first one is gonna be because it can raise your credit limit and thus lower your utilization rate. So let me give you an example right here. Let's say you have a few different cards with a total credit limit of $10,000. Let's keep it simple and say you have a Capital One card with a limit of $5,000 and a Discover card with a limit of $5,000. Now let's say each of those cards have a $2,500 balance or a 50% utilization rate. If you were to go out and open another Discover card or another Capital One credit card and get a limit of let's just say $3,000, that's gonna raise your overall total limit from 10,000 to 13,000, and that's gonna lower your utilization rate from 50% all the way to 38%, which is a huge bonus in the credit bureaus. And on top of that, 90% of the time you open a new credit card, and you have to verify this in writing, but most of the time credit companies are gonna have 0% introductory rates for around a year to 18 months. So it's a great strategy to take care of some debt and pay down the principal instead of paying all those greedy credit card companies straight towards interest. Now, another thing to keep in mind before you just go out there and apply for a credit card, they are going to run a hard inquiry. So you wanna make sure that you're applying for a credit card company that you have a relationship, a positive relationship. I cannot stress this enough. Now on the flip side of that, if you do think you have bad credit, meaning anything below 650 in general, go ahead and check out this video right here because I'm going to talk about the five top credit cards for bad credit that can guarantee you getting approval so that you can increase your credit score in 2020. Now besides me just telling you to go move your debt around to increase your credit score, here's a few things that I want you to commit to this year in 2020 to be able to really take action. The first one is, is if you have to buy a car, do not go to the dealership to get approved. Make sure that you apply prior to maybe go to a local bank or a local credit union to get the best interest rate and get pre-qualified there. It's going to run your credit beforehand, but at least when you go to the dealership, they don't have to run your credit 30 times to be able to fit you with a bank that you probably could have just gone to and applied for and gotten approved for outside of the credit union. The second thing I want you to think about when you're applying for a new credit card or any type of new credit in general is try to apply for a credit card that's going to have an automatic credit line increase or CLI. Now, if you don't know what a credit line increase, it's simply put like this. If you were to apply for a credit card with Capital One that has a credit line increase, they'll evaluate how you're using your credit card every six to eight months. And based off how you use that credit card, if you're paying off your debt on time, they will automatically increase your limit, which will ultimately, like we talked about, lower your utilization rate of debt and ultimately boost up your credit score. And some awesome banks that you can apply for is gonna be Capital One, Discover Bank, or any local credit union that you have, or Navy Federal if you can get access to them as well. If you don't wanna go out there and apply for a new credit card, the second option that you could do is apply for credit line increases on cards that you already have. Now you wanna be careful when you're applying for credit line increases because you don't wanna just go out there with the card that has the highest utilization rate or the card that's completely maxed out and ask for a credit line increase because the credit card company is most likely not going to give you that. You want to go for the card that at least has a 30% utilization rate or lower. So going back to the example where we had the Capital One and the Discover card with 50% utilization rates, I would say in that example that you should apply for another credit card rather than going out and asking for credit line increases. Because at a 50% utilization rate, it's very rare that a credit card company is actually going to give you a credit line increase that's significant enough. And even if they do get you approved, it's probably only going to be like a thousand dollars or two in that scenario whereas you could go out and apply for a new credit card and get a three to four to five thousand dollar credit line in the first place so anyways i hope you enjoyed that video i try to keep it super straight to the point so if you enjoyed this content give it a thumbs up i'll be waiting for you in the comment section to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for new credit videos coming out every single week and videos about real estate and building wealth as well catch you guys on the next one